This show is for the sales leader who knows they have a pivotal role in driving outstanding sales results. Getting hired or promoted to manage a sales team is a big accomplishment, but you know you have to work hard to become a great sales leader. You are listening to the Divine Comedy of Sales podcast. Here's your host, coach, and advisor to elite sales leaders from around the world, Matt McDarvey. Hello and welcome to the Divine Comedy of Sales podcast. I'm Matt McDarby, veteran seller, leader, and coach and advisor to elite sales leaders all over the world. Once again, I'm so happy that you've chosen to listen to this show. And today we have a real treat because we have an interview. We're going to have a conversation with a leader that I've come to know. Uh, We've become friends. I've spent a fair amount of time together over the years, and I've chosen to interview Tony DeLeo, who is currently a senior director of sales at Converge One, a longtime seller and leader at Avaya and Lucent, um, and just an all-around terrific human and a great leader who's produced fantastic results over many, many years of uh, selling himself and leading others. So I'm so happy to welcome Tony. Tony, Thank you for making time to participate uh, in the show and uh, thrilled to have you. So welcome. Hey, Matt, it's great to be here. I'm thrilled to be here. So when I started making my list of people that I wanted to talk to for this podcast, the emphasis is on people doing the job, right? It's not the theorists and the people writing the books like me, but it's the people doing the work who've been at it for a while, who I know uh, can paint a picture about what great sales leadership looks like because they're doing it every day. So what I wanted to do is I've got some questions. I want to ask you about your experiences as a leader, um, and we're going to pick up a few things, I think, based on your experience. And then at the end of the conversation, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to think about and summarize for the people listening. What did we just hear Tony say? All right, so um, so we're just going to dive right in. So, So my first question, my first question is, what's the most important lesson you've learned so far about leading a sales team? Sure. That's such a great question, Matt. I think at the end of the day, for me, it's probably that you have to have their back. The folks that you're supporting in the field, your salespeople, they have to know that you have their back. And that doesn't come easy, right? It's a two-way street. You know, what are the goals? Are you committing to them? Are you going to do them with integrity? Are you going to be on time? Okay. Are we committed to the results? And if you can get that commitment from them, right? And you can genuinely let them know that you have their back. To me, that is the most powerful lesson I've learned because, you know, people will really perform and really join a world-class sales team if they feel their sales leader has their back, right? And I, I would probably say the second thing though, right? I mean, it's a close second is you also have to have street creds, right? You need to be able to say to your team, you know, hey, I've, I've done this role before. I've been a single contributor. I've led sales teams. I've had success, I've had great wins. I've had some great losses, right? And I'm here to, to help you with that, you know, and I exist to make you better, right? Um, you know, th- things like that, I, f- I feel like they'll go a long way. And, and sometimes it's even the little things like, you know, keeping your LinkedIn profile up where your team can say, hey, this is my sales leader. You know, he's got some street credits and, you know, take a look. Um, that, that all kind of adds up and, you know, really matters, I've learned. Yeah, yeah. So make sure your team knows that you have their back and bring some street cred, know the job, be able to demonstrate that. You know, it's interesting. Both of those things kind of get to uh, trust as I'm hearing, meaning that, right, if you're, if you're, if you've got the street cred and that means you're credible in the role, you know what you're doing, you understand the job. And the, I've got your back thing is that's kind of, you can rely on me, right? And those are two really like the biggest factors in building trust within a team are reliability and credibility. So it's really interesting that you zero in on those. If I was a member of your team, what would be an example? Like maybe it's a recent example. So what would be an example of you having my back? What would that look like? Sure. You know, you, you make a misstep with a customer, you know, it has to do with pricing that happened recently, right? You know, Tony, I messed up, you know, I went in at this price and you know, I shouldn't have, and I, I didn't check this box and here I am. Right. So, you know, let's, Matt, let's talk about it and, and let's talk about um, how we can fix it and how do we learn from the experience type thing, right? That type of thing. Yeah. Well, on your side. On your side. Right. That's a that can. Right. And you know, it happens. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, that res- that example resonates with me because I've, I've definitely done that as a salesperson, right? Right. right. You, you realize you put the code together as a complex solution and then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. And it's all in writing at that point, right? You have to kind of 
have to redo it, right? So, you know, it's knowing that, hey, I can approach my boss as a sales leader. You know, he's going to understand he's been there before. There's got to be a solution. I know he's going to have my back and I'm going to work hard for this guy or gal because, you know, they do have my back. And that goes a long way with me as a salesperson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I totally get that. Um, all right. So um, another question. I know you love this job, right? I've talked to you about sales and sales leadership and and if you ever, anybody listening to this gets a chance to meet Tony, he's one of the most positive, likable guys you'll ever run into. But there's something about this job that he does that just sort of, it just works for him. It's like the perfect role, I think. Uh, so what is it that you love most about leading a sales team? Sure. I appreciate that, Matt. I really, really appreciate that. And I'll tell you, um, for me, it's having the opportunity to go into a room with enthusiasm and having your enthusiasm fill the room around something that you're trying to sell, frankly, right? So the company comes up with this huge agenda of, of what the solutions are that they want to, they want us to impact for customers. And you get to set the agenda, right? As a sales leader, you get to narrow that focus a little bit based on your vertical and your customers. And then you're able to bring it to the team and bring your enthusiasm, you know, and, and love for the technology, the company, the solution, and get them excited about a subset of what the company wants you excited about because every market is different, right? And I think as sales leaders, it's up to us to narrow the focus and bring enthusiasm to it. I really believe that that's what I like the most. Yeah. And you're, a lot of your job is sort of translating things that are strategically important to the business into things that are maybe tactical, but important to the team, right? Very specifically. But what you're saying is you're also building enthusiasm around that, which I got to tell you, that's, you know me, like yeah. I'm Mr. Sort of not, I don't bring the energy all the time. I really have to, I'm an introvert. I have to work at that. For others, it comes a little more easily. But what I'm hearing you say is it's not only the translation, it's bringing enthusiasm and kind of an upbeat approach to it, making that, like doing that translation. Is that right? That's exactly what you're hearing. And, you know, in my, I'm kind of in the cloud technology space now, use unified communication, contact center. And all of a sudden now we're very into cybersecurity, data center enterprise. It's daunting you know, the amount that this integrator I work for has us, you know, kind of in our bag. You have to unpack that for sales folks and you've got to get them excited about, I think what you think as a sales leader is most applicable to your customer set or your market, right? Uh, or your vertical. So um, I, I enjoy doing that because it's, it's tricky, right? It, getting folks excited, it's, it's, uh, it's the commission dollars, right? It's maybe where the spiffs are, but at the end of the day, it's where's the opportunity to make the most money. Yeah. Well, I think you also said something that's important, which is sort of tapping into, it's like tapping into the motivators around this, whatever this thing is. And sometimes it is the spiff, it is the money, but there are other things too, right? Right. There might be something else, some other way in which this we're competitively different in these ways. Absolutely. That was the thing I found as a seller, as a bag carrying seller. And I've worked for both a very large integrator and a smaller one. When you have such a big breadth of offerings like you do yes. in your current, uh, in your, with your current employer, um, it is hard to make sense of like, well, what are my priorities? What am I going to lead with? Am I, am I leading with the right thing? I'm not, a, I'm not all that enthusiastic about this thing over here. Maybe I'm, I like something else. So I need Tony to help me. Right. Absolutely. And, and, um, you know, a priority for one salesperson may be different if the customer set is different for the other. Right. And then that goes to, right. that goes to good coaching, understanding your sales folks. Right. So you're setting the agenda there and you're excited about things that you think could fit their customer set. Well, which a lot of times, yeah. you know, there's a difference there in customer set. So that's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. No, that coaching is critical. I've, ha I've had it. I've been the recipient of it and you're hundred percent right about it. You said something about like the tricky part is I want to zero in on that now because we know this job is challenging. I think I'm biased. I'll admit it. I think that the sale, the job of the sales manager is not only the most important, but it's the most challenging in an organization. People listening may be like, well, yeah, it's really the seat. I'm just saying, I think it's the hardest, right? So what have you found to be the most challenging part of leading people, leading salespeople, leading people in general? Uh, you know, I think, Matt, I'm a big proponent of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I, and I think, you know, one of the challenges in corporate America, you know, kind of that uh, uh, enterprise space in corporate America is... There's, there's this possibility of groupthink that happens week after week where the company gives you what you should be thinking about, get together as a group, come up with a strategy. And I think as sales leaders, we have to do that to a certain degree. We have to answer general questions, but it boils down to, in my opinion, getting folks to focus one-on-one. -on -one. 
You know, I do a 30 minute one on one with my nine folks every week. And if something has to change, we move it. But it's the individual time that you spend with salespeople that is key. And it's also challenging. A lot of times they don't want to do it. And a lot of times you're pulled in different directions as a sales leader to make it happen. But it's key because each sales individual, in my experience, my career is different to a certain degree. And one on one time is key. Driving great sales results is hard. Doing it consistently is even harder. There are so many obstacles that can prevent you from becoming the most effective sales leader you can be. Find practical advice you can apply right away by picking up your copy of Matt's book, The Divine Comedy of Sales, at www.divinecomedyofsales.com. So, Tony, there were actually two challenges there in what you said. One was kind of finding the time and staying committed to that one-on-one coaching. And, and, but the other one was kind of the reason for the coaching in the first place, the one-to-one is that there's a lot of, is like kind of group think there's just a lot of noise. There's just a lot, right. And that helping individual sellers to sort of process all that has to happen within one-on-one interactions or there's risk that, right. That the message really doesn't resonate with people because everybody's different, right. That's exactly right. I think that some sales leaders that I that I have as peers do a terrific job and they have the best, you know, team meetings in the world and that's where the focus is and the, you know the debate goes on, but at the end of the day, there, you know, the, we have an uh, an agenda that the the company has laid out in a portfolio and I honestly feel that it's different for every single salesperson. If you don't commit to that quality time one-on-one, it doesn't become applicable to that individual salesperson and their customers. I really feel that way. And, you know, and that's, that's when the real discussion comes out too, doesn't it? Matt is one-on-one. Um, and it's Absolutely. in the field and, and outside of the field. Uh, so yeah. you have to stay committed to it. That, that goes back to the question, you know, the challenge, the challenge is you have to stay committed as a sales leader and you have to keep them committed to not move it. Right. I'm too busy. I'm with my customers. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. No, we need some time together. How are we doing against plan? And, and how are you doing in terms of grasping what we're trying to do here? How can I help? Well, I think that also connects up with one of the first things you said about, I have your back. Like, I'm interested. I'm here for you. Yeah. Or literally, I'm here for you. Here's my time. It's the one thing that I have the least sort of, you know, um, there's a, I have a fixed inventory there, right? Yeah, that's right. And I'm giving you some of it on a regular basis every week. And I think that those, that's a very similar message, isn't it? It is. It's a similar message. And, um, You know, I I think in group meetings, there's a lot of back and forth and, you know, I come out of a lot of group, I come out of a lot of team meetings or region meetings where, you know, the back and forth happens and all of a sudden everyone feels a certain way about something. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden you meet one-on-one and they have a totally different, you know, take on the situation. So I think both are important. I think it's important to have Q and A and lay out agendas in a group setting, but I think it's imperative and it's a challenge to stay committed to one-on-one meetings with your sales troops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That's great. Okay. Let's talk about, you know, you, so, you know, look, I think many of us who land in leadership roles, if you look back at our careers, even going back to the beginning, the early days, you can see people are in. So what people wouldn't know about you is I think I read you were the student body president at, at Siena, right? In college. So going all the way back to your 20s, right? So you've got leadership, it's sort of in the DNA, right? Sure. But I said, I argue with people that we all have some of it. We have to cultivate it. And if you really want to be an effective leader, it's one thing to have those sort of God-given capabilities. It's another to develop those. And, um, and, and we need coaches and mentors and examples in our lives to kind of grow as leaders. So Thinking about your own experience, who's had the most influence on you and your work as a, as a leader? Could be anybody. So, you know, I would probably say, I would say it was my dad. My dad grew up uh, in a different generation than you and I did, Matt, right? And he was a 32 year IBMer, right? Uh, and he was a sales leader back in the heyday of the you know, big computers. And, and uh, he worked for one of the biggest companies in the world and talk about corporate America and the blue suits and all nine yards, right? But one of the things I learned from him is the power of people. And 
I try to go week to week as, as a sales leader, learning from the people I'm around and supporting the people that I'm around, the people who support me. And I find that it's very reciprocal. And that my, you know, my, my father always used to say to me when I was a, a young sales leader in the 90s, I would, call, I would reach out to him for, for advice on this problem, that problem. He said, Tony, don't ever underestimate the power of people. You know, if you win them over, if you, you know, go back, if you have their back, they will go through walls for you. And don't ever stop networking, you know, and uh, because people is where the power is. Uh, and, I, and that has resonated with me over the years. And I, I keep trying to build on that. And, and frankly, in, in technology, you can learn from people every single day. So it's imperative to have that and to, and to commit to making time to give, reach out to folks when you don't have an ask or a need, but to catch up on, on how things are going. That's awesome. Power of people, power of people, right? So that's a great, a great lesson. You know, I know people who've come into sales leadership roles who maybe they don't have that sort of, they don't, they don't, they haven't had that example. They don't really understand that in the end, this work is about others. It's about developing people. It's about having strong relationships. It's building trust, but it's all of that sort of EQ, emotional intelligence and the, the we part of the work. Right. Yeah. It sounds like your dad, your dad learned that even though he was in that sort of stodgy blue IBM world, he picked up on that in, in his time there. Right. He really did, you know, and it, and it rubs off on you, right. As a son. And, uh, you know, as you, when I think of my mentors over the years and I think about my dad, you know, you end up coming to them with problems and issues. And it seems to me that, you know, he, his solution was always, let's talk about who specifically is involved and how they relate the problem that you're having, right? Um, so I think it's important as sales leaders, sure, you got to stay up on the technology, the solution that you're selling, whatever that is, you have to stay up with people and the people, not just that you support, the people who support you. Yeah, you know? that's fabulous. Great. Yeah. Thank you to Mr. DeLeo for that lesson. Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Matt. All right. In the last few minutes we have, I'll just ask you my big sort of open, what else, Tony? Like what else about, do you think we should know about leading um, you know, we're talking about leading salespeople, and maybe it's more broad than that, leading people in general, leading teams. Uh, what else haven't we talked about that you want to make sure that uh, you share with others listening? Sure. You know, I think, Matt, I've, a lot of time reflecting during COVID, a lot of time spending time at, at uh, working from home and video calls one-on-one. -on -one. I think one thing that comes to mind is remember to keep your nose clean. Like we, we work in such a small industry, like industries are tight, right? And companies are small and everyone talks. And uh, just in the last six months or a year, I've had some situations with sales folks where, hey, you know, if you make a mistake, apologize to the person you made the mistake to, whether it's a colleague or, or a customer. And, um, you know, don't, don't have enemies and grudges. Make a mistake, say you're sorry, and let's move on, right? We work in a small industry and and it's really important. And, you know, you talk about integrity in your books. And I think that's important to have when you have those one-on-one -on -one conversations is how's it going with everybody? How are you doing with your inside sales rep? How are you doing with your engineer? And where are you having conflict with customers? And talk about it and keep things as clean as possible and help them keep things as clean as possible. That comes to mind for sure. Um, yeah. You know, I would, I, one of the other things I think that comes to mind is the idea of asking for feedback. I don't think we as salespeople do that enough, right? We're constantly right. asking customers for the sale and, and such, but I think uh, today more than ever, it's important to get feedback from your peers. Things are changing so quickly. Things are happening more rapidly. They're happening over video is, you know, ask for feedback. It's important. I remember being uh, a sales guy working for Lucent Technologies in the 90s. And uh, I had to ask for feedback because the, the boss demanded of it. And two things came up. One was um, be a little bit more responsive. And I said to myself, what are you talking about? More responsive. I felt like I'm really responsive. Well, I sent you an email on Monday. You responded on Wednesday. You kind of had figured out, but I didn't know you were working on it. You know, let me know that you're you're yeah. working on it type thing. Um, and then the other one was be on time. I, and I said to myself, I'm on time. <laughs> he said, well, we had that great sales call last week. You did a great job with the customer. We're getting the sale, but you were late. I said, well, what do you mean I was late? You walked in at 9.02. The, the meeting started at nine o'clock. And you, do you know that 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 those types of nitbits of little tidbits of feedback go a long way. And I sure. I think nowadays we simply don't ask for feedback enough as salespeople, as sales leaders. How can I do my job better? Yeah. Yeah. And we have to be open to it yeah. too, right? It's not only ask for feedback, but listen to the feedback, be open to it and get better. Yeah. 
hundred percent. So, hey, look, this has been fantastic. And like I said, we're just we're just grabbing a, a moment in the life of Tony DeLeo, sales leader, and picking up a few ideas. When I wrap up here, I'm going to share just su- summarize a few of the things that you said and kind of line up. How do they? How do they sound? They sound familiar. Like the things that make you a great leader, I've heard before elsewhere, right? So there are some common uh, patterns in the way that great leaders approach their work. So I'm going to get to that next. I really appreciate your time. It's so great to have you on. And uh, thanks again. So thanks again to Tony DeLeo for just a great interview. You got a little bit of a taste of uh, why I uh, chose to have Tony on the show, the enthusiasm that he brings to his job. It's all authentic, right? There's no putting it on, there's no putting on airs with Tony. He's uh, uh, so polished and so good at what he does. So I was thrilled to have him join. I want to share just some of the things that I heard him say in a form of summary, and then let's think about what are the ways in which we can apply some of the ideas that Tony shared here. So he said a few things that really stuck out for me. One was your people really have to know that you have their back. That was one of the most important lessons he said he's learned over his many years of leading teams. He also said you have to bring street cred, he said, credibility to the role, right? You've got to be able to demonstrate to your people that you understand, not only understand the work that they're doing, but you have quite a bit of capability to do it yourself. And when I think about those two ideas, right, that, you know, that you have their back translated another way, that you have their best interests at heart, you're focused on them. And then the street cred, that goes to credibility. Do you know your your subject matter, right? Do you understand the work and how it needs to be done? You know, credibility and that kind of other orientation are two really critical factors that affect trust on a team. So one of the lessons we can take from Tony's example is that there are ways that you can actively build trust with your team. One is to, you know, always demonstrate that you have their back, their best interests at heart. Of course, balance with the business's best interest, of course, right? Um, and that you have the credibility, you know the job, right? That you are someone who really understands what they're going through. So I think those are really critical points. The other thing that he said he's done over the years to great effect has been you know, to translate corporate initiatives, corporate strategy, and to take those kind of big picture initiatives and to translate them. And the way that he put it was, he was talking really about his enthusiasm, which is something that he leads with, which is a natural one of his, uh, Tony's traits. But he said more than just lead with enthusiasm. He said, narrow the focus and bring the enthusiasm. What he meant was, and what, what he was describing to us was, in the process of delivering a message to your team, you have to do so enthusiastically. But there's another big step here. You have to translate those elements from the corporate strategy, from strategic initiatives uh, that really should matter most to them, either based on their customer base um, or where there are opportunities to grow, where they, where we can compete and win against competition. And if you do all of that with enthusiasm, then you are going to have a team that is equally, if not more enthusiastic about pursuing those strategic initiatives. Why? Because they understand how they relate to their situation. And that's one of the things that Tony has mastered. And then finally, one of the other things that he talked about was this kind of the one-on-one relationship that he has with each member of his team. Now he has nine direct reports. It's a fairly sizable team. Some of you listening may have more, but I've always found that span of control, once we get above seven people, eight, nine more, is where it becomes really challenging to maintain a consistent one-on-one development uh, coaching rhythm with your team. So that's one of the things that Tony holds fast to is this regular interaction one-on-one with each member of his team. And that's the place where he not only seeks to understand each member of the team and what's important to them but also what they're trying to achieve. And that's also the place where he does that direct, highly targeted sort of translation of company strategic initiatives into the things that really matter to individuals 
on his team. And, you know, he told the story about his dad and the, 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 the biggest lesson he's learned, which I want to relate here as well, because it's so important, something we we can easily forget about because it sounds maybe cliche, but he talked about the power of people and a lesson that his father, who was a 30 plus year veteran of sales at IBM and was in sales leadership roles, that one of the lessons he taught Tony was you should never underestimate the power of relationships, right? No surprise. If you have people's backs, they will have yours, right? It, it just, it goes to reason, stands to reason that that's so important in a team of humans who are fighting against competition, uh, dealing with a complex sale, trying to make sense of all of these strategic initiatives. They're doing all of that in an environment where they know they're supported, where they know they have a leader they can go to when they're struggling because they will struggle, that that goes a very, very long way to having the sort of team where people do put in that extra effort, right? They give all that they can, which in the end is all really we, we can do as leaders is to ask people to give their absolute best effort. They literally can't do more than that. So I'm so thrilled that Tony was able to join us because he paints a clear picture, right? The value of relationships, the power of people, as he put it. And then, uh, you know, what he does to defend his one-on-one -on -one time and how he translates corporate initiatives enthusiastically for his team. I just think that's all so useful. So what I want you to think about um, in your own practice as a leader or as an aspiring leader is, you know, how can I, how can I put some of that into action today or tomorrow? Are there relationships maybe I need to invest into? Is there some one-on-one -on -one time that I need to carve out, right? Do I need to be more generous with my time, perhaps one-on-one -on -one with my people? Things to think about. So I hope that you found today's episode valuable. I do so much appreciate Tony giving his time and offering yet another great example of what virtuous leadership looks like in the real world. In uh, future episodes, we will have other great leaders featured in this interview style format, we're gonna dive really deeply into how they think about their jobs and how that translates into action. So thank you so much for joining this episode, uh, listening to this episode of The Divine Comedy of Sales. Until then, this is Matt McDarby, author and host of The Divine Comedy of Sales podcast. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye for now.